All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is the Google Docs PD for the Canyons District Office. Um, I do want to mention that we are doing the um, Google Docs, and then next week I have to be, I have another commitment. So what I did is I bounced the next PD for of Google Forms down to January 28th, and then I will plan on doing one on February 4th with Adobe Spark. So today's professional development is going to focus on Google Sheets. Um, with Google Sheets, the learning intentions are going to be voice typing, headers and footers, the explore feature, um, editing, suggesting, and viewing mode, version history, bookmarks, table of contents, and document outlines, uh, the paint tool, charts, find and replace. We're going to look at um, how to add Google add-ons and some other things if and when they come up. I will know that I'm successful with Google Docs when I can use it to support my needs for my word processing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take you into a document that um, is used for our administrators, and it was created by our accounting, auditing, and budgeting department. So in this document, um, notice that there's like a table of contents. We have a lot of um, different organization within it. We've got like titles and, and underlines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I'm looking at this document, um, there's a lot of things we're going to be able to play with in it, which is why I decided to bring this one up. So coming back to what we're going to be learning, um, first thing I'm going to talk about is voice typing. So it has been, um, they've been doing some studies on voice typing, and they found out that people can be up to 60% more effective when they actually are using voice typing. And the reason is, is because people can talk at a lot faster rate than they can type. So um, Google Docs has that feature available. And if you go to tools, you will be able to see voice typing here. Or if you're on a Mac, you can use Command, Shift, and S. And that will bring up the voice typing tool as well. So voice typing, when you um, have it pulled up, you can go ahead over to the left-hand side. And notice it just says to click to speak. So as I click on that, it's first time, will allow me to use my microphone so I can allow that microphone. And now notice that it is typing for me. I want you to notice that right now, it is not typing any punctuation or anything like that. But if I added a sentence, like I really like Google Docs, period, Notice that punctuation is now popping up for me, period. When I'm done typing, using my voice typing, I can just come over to the left-hand side again and click on the microphone. And then it will stop my voice typing. So notice how fast I just typed almost an entire paragraph. So from here, then I would be able to go back through and read through what I want and add punctuation or edit it it's not going to be 100% effective, but it will be a lot better than trying to remember um, what you're trying to type, especially if you're a slower typist. Um, so, for example, they were talking about doctors, and doctors can type like a, um, about 30 words per minute. I know that if you are working in district employee as a district employee, you're probably typing faster than a doctor. But they're saying that doctors type about 30 words per minute. The average doctor can speak 156 words per minute. So basically, they're multiplying that, um, their, their typing speed to their um, speaking speed, and it's about five times faster to use the voice. So when I'm looking at this voice typing, notice um, that if I just do a quick Google search of voice typing Google Docs, this is what's going to show up for you. So it will teach you, and it will show you how to add that punctuation. So if you're trying to add a comma, it will just tell you what to say. So if you say comma, it will automatically put a comma in there. If you want a new line, you could add, you could say new line, or you could even add it as a new paragraph. Okay. There are also voice typing commands. So if you need to go through, and maybe you want to use editing features to edit, you could come here, and here's a bunch of different. Um, voice editing features that you could use. 
For example, if you want to select all, you could hit that record button and do a select all, or a select line, or select next, deselect, etc. So that is voice typing. Does anyone have any questions on voice typing? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on now to headers and footers. So before I do that, I'm just going to erase what I have here so it doesn't really mess with the document um, that I want to show you with later. So headers and footers are usually where people will put um, like page numbers or if they have like a, a image or something that they want to show at all times. So one, two ways to do it. The first way is just to double click either at the very top of a document page or at the very bottom of a document page. So that is your header and footer. So the reason that you want to use headers and footers is because you want something consistent going from page to page to page. Another way to add my headers and footers is to go to insert, and then you should see headers and footers here. And so then I would be able to click on if I want the header or the footer. But I think it's just easier to just do my double click to the top and I can access it. Now notice, because I'm on my very first page, there is an option to say that I want a different first page. So if I click that, anything I did on this first page wouldn't show up on the rest of the pages. But for example, maybe I want to add the Canyons District logo that I have on my desktop. I could literally just click on that icon and just drag it to where I want it to go. Notice that it kind of puts that line there, and now I can paste that in. So from there, now I can size it if I want to. I can come here and I can make any adjustments I want to it. So maybe I just want it to be very subtle. I could come and edit that transparency and bring that up to maybe 80 or 85%. So now when I click off of it, I can see that it is in there or up there. Okay, Maybe I want to have it more centered. I could just easily just drag, um, let me see, I can just come here and do like my options and move it where I need it to go. Or maybe I want it to be left, not left aligned, but maybe I want it to be diagonal a little bit or something like that. I can just come here, um, pick my corners, I can move it to the side. Um, and then here, I have it right aligned right now. I can come and left align it, or I know a lot of people would just like, it centered. So then you'd be able to come and center it. On the bottom is usually where you put things like um, page numbers. So on the bottom, I could come down and click on my options. I could choose a page number. And then I can say that I want it showing on the first page, or maybe that is just a title page. So I don't want it showing on the first page. Or I can say, I want it to start numbering since I didn't show it on my first page. Maybe I want it to start numbering on page two. And then I can apply that. Oh, since I didn't have it starting on there. So now I can see um, that there's my page two and it will go down and do my page numbers for me. Uh, questions with footers and headers. Okay. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you is the explore feature. So this is um, a newer feature for uh, Google Docs. But basically down here on the bottom right hand side, if I am looking for something, okay, I can use my explore tool. So maybe I was looking for um, Canyon School District. Um, notice it will auto populate different things that it's like, what do you think you might want here? And then I could come and I could find um, web results right here. I can find images. So maybe I need to look for different whatever it is. Um, and I could look here. Or maybe I just need to find stuff that is within my drive, Google Drive already. And then what I could do is I can um, pop it up. So maybe it was like I wanted to learn more about retirement, and I know I had more stuff in retirement that I needed to add to this document, I could come over into my Explore feature, I could come into my drive, and then I could search for retirement, and um, 
any documents that apply to that retirement would show up in my um, right hand side explore tool. And so then it would open it up in a new tab where I would be able to find that information and maybe copy and paste it over. So this could be a good feature for you or if you're just looking for like an image that would go along with retirement that you wanna add into your document, I could easily search for retirement. I could find an image and I'm like, oh, this one looks like a good one. And then it, I could, it would pull it up a little bit bigger. I can say whether I wanna insert it or not. And then it will just throw it right into my document for me. So this is just a little bit of a nice feature. Oops. Um, if I don't want to have to go out and search for different things, I just want um, them to show up for, or I just want to go and find them here and add them in. So take that as you want, use it, don't use it, it's up to you. But it's just a new feature I thought I would show you. And this next one is one of my favorite. Oh wait, does anyone have any questions on um, features, the explore feature? Okay. Um, the next one I'm going to show you guys is the editing, suggestion, and viewing mode. And this is actually my favorite feature that Google Docs has to offer. So maybe I am working on this document with a bunch of people. Okay. So I have my, um, I have this and it's like I'm sharing this document with four or five people and I want to suggest a change. I don't want to put it in there because I don't want them to um, get mad that I'm editing the document, or maybe you're not sure, but you're like, I think this would be a good change. So maybe right here, okay, maybe um, I'm just gonna say that all of these were lowercase for a second. Okay, and I'm like, you know what? I think that these need to be capitalized. So what I can do here is right up here on the right hand side, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Right here on this right hand side is what we're in is editing mode. So basically any changes that I make are automatically gonna show up there. So if I delete and add, it, it just looks like I'm the one editing the document, great. Okay, but what I could do if I want to um, be working with other people and I want them to see those changes or see those suggestions, I can come down here and go into suggesting mode. So now I say, Great, I think that all of these pieces right here, this accounting should be capitalized, auditing should be capitalized, budgeting, and department. So now when I come right here, notice it's showing these replacements. So the person I'm working with would be able to go into this document when they open it, and they would be able to see all of these replacements over on the right-hand side. That person would be able to say, Oh yeah, that totally makes sense. I wonder, we should replace the lowercase a with the, with the uppercase a. So they could just click on this access, accept suggestion and it was going to put it in as if um, it wasn't a suggestion that it's just the way it needs to be. So that person could go in and accept those suggestions. Okay, um, another thing, okay, um, when I do it, like if I needed to delete a certain thing, um, so maybe I wanted to, um, say add an extra sentence here. Okay. Or delete something. If I try to delete something like maybe I don't want it to say all, all children will graduate. I just want to say all will graduate. I could come here and just delete this while I'm still in suggesting mode and it will just show that it's been deleted. If I add something, um, all, let's see, we'll graduate from Canyon School District, college, career, and maybe I want to say college, career, and social, emotional, emotionally ready. Notice that um, I've got, now I have a replace option, I have that delete option, and then it shows me that I wanted to add it. So if that person comes in here and they're like, college, career, and socially, emotionally, are you crazy? They could easily come and just exit that out and it would disappear like nothing ever happened. So um, your other option is to give 
or let's say that you just want to read something and you notice that someone is giving you editing mode so, or editing privileges and you're like, I don't want to mess up this document. It's too important to mess up. One option you could do is bring it into this viewing mode. And what that does is it says it's, that you're viewing it. So no matter what you try to do, like I'm trying to delete this right here, I have no option to delete it. There's nothing I can do. I can't make any changes and type in it. I can't do anything. It's just viewing. I'm just being able to read it. When I'm ready to go through and make changes to it, then I simply bring it back up and put it either into that editing mode, which is just making the changes like normal, or that suggesting mode, which is giving other people those suggestions that they can use. Does anyone have any questions with those that editing suggesting mode? Oh, I see I have a chat. Love the explore feature, can't wait to play with that. Cool, that's exciting. Okay, um, yeah, so like I said, that suggesting mode is one of my favorite things. I'm currently working on my um, capstone right now with a couple other people, and that suggesting mode is like the best feature ever because we're able to go in and, and focus and um, change other people's stuff without uh, showing them so they can decide whether they want those changes made or not. Um, along with that feature, okay, one other thing that you can do, it's not necessarily that suggesting an editing mode, but if I do like a, a two finger click and I do a right click on it, right here is a comment. So that way I can say, um, provide excellence. Do you mean, or let's see, um, can you explain this further? And so then, or maybe I want to say, um, word choice. So maybe you want them to discuss the word more. Then I can leave this comment here, and that person will be able to go in here and say, um, oh, I noticed this is highlighted in yellow. What did she say about it? And then they can decide whether they want to use that or not. Great, I love that. I can go back in and change it and say, provide understanding or provide further support, whatever I want it to say. And then I can get rid of this when I'm ready to get rid of it. So that commenting feature is another really good one besides that. Um, another thing that you can do with it, I don't know if you saw that, but in that commenting mode, notice it says comment and add others. So maybe I wanted um, to work with um, somebody on that. I could say at, and then I could start typing in like their CSD docs account. So if I wanted to work with Danae Gothard on that, I would be able to add her to it and I could even assign it. So um, Danae, you need to work more on this section. It's not where it needs to be yet or we need to further revise it. I could give her suggestions and when I do that, I can assign it to her. And what it will do is it will send her an alert through her um, Gmail saying, hey, someone sent this mention to you. Uh, you might want to open it and look at it, basically. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to give her an alert. But um, know that that is, is a possibility. That is a really nice feature, especially when you're starting to work with more people on a project. Um, any questions with the, that comment feature? Um, the next one is version history. Version history is was one of my quick tip tools the other day. Um, and I really, really love this feature. So the way that you get to it is I can come up here to file and I can click on my version history. Okay. And then I can say that I want to see that version history. When I do that, now I can see all of the change, not all of the changes, but a lot of the changes, it has like a, a timeline of those changes that I can look at. So I can go back and say, here is the first time I ever op or created this document. So obviously it was didn't start from scratch. I just copied a new one and I can tell because everything in there was done by me. And then I can come up to this one and see um, if there were any changes to it really it would show up in with those green highlights and I don't really see any changes to it. Okay. Um, but if I come up to like today where I've been working on it with you guys, I can see that every couple minutes there's been changes made. So I would be able to come back and see, let me go to more recent. Um, I would be able to go back and see what changes were made. So now I can see um, this social emotionally was added here. 
um, et cetera. So you'd be able to see those changes here. If there's more than one person working on it, this, um, this version history is really nice because not only would it have my name here, it's going to have anyone else that's been working in the document. So if me and Danae and Katie Schmoltz and, and uh, Michelle Shimon were all working in the same document, each of us would have a different color dot. And then I'd be able to come back here. And when I'm seeing, for example, I deleted children on this one. Okay, I would be able to see if Danae was the one that did it, maybe hers would show up with a yellow um, delete symbol. So then I'm like, um, so then if somebody royally messed this up, I could go back and say, or if I royally messed this up, I could go back and say, yeah, this version is not a very good version. I need to go back and see where um, the correct version is. So I could come down here and be like, oh yeah, this is a much better version. And what I could do if I like that is I could actually restore the version so it takes it back to the working document of that old document that I had versus any new changes. Okay. Or my other option with it is, no, I want this version still, but I want the old version as well. So then I could go and I could make a copy of it. So then I have a co both copies available to me. Um, the other nice feature with this um, version history is let's say I did mess something up and I didn't even realize it. I could come and let's say I deleted this entire box. I could come and um, copy this into my um, my working document. So when I go and get back out of it, if I copied this, I could bring it back in here and then paste it in and then just rechange my color. Or if I made a copy of it, I could do it that way too. So version history, one of my other favorite tools in here. Does anyone have any questions on version history? Okay, sounds good. Bookmarks, table of contents, and document outlines. So um, this is another great tool that you can use, especially when your documents start getting, for example, this one is 12 pages long. That's uh, a really long document, okay? Um, but what you can do is you can create outlines or table of contents to go with it. Now, I know that the accounting department already created this table of contents right here. But um, if, I, like a lot of times you'll see um, people create a table of contents and they'll be like, well, this is on page three and this one is on um, page four and this one was on page six but then as you're going i all of a sudden i'm adding to my department organization so now this one is actually page eight and all of these are now messed up too so instead of doing that okay um or with like example this table of contents does absolutely nothing for me there's nothing i can see or do with it okay know that over here is my outline tool. So what it's doing is based off of all of um, all of these headings, it's automatically creating an outline for me that I can see what's going on. So if I need to get to my table of contents, I would be able to click on it and it would move me up to table of contents. Or if I need to just quickly look at payroll. I could come down and click right here and it would automatically take me to payroll. Now know that when you start um, uh, bolding stuff and, and making it look like subheadings, it's automatically gonna create these um, outline headings for you. But what you can do is you can start creating them yourself. So for example, um, let me move down a little bit, okay? If I, after retirement, wanted to add one, maybe about uh, the summer social, okay? Um, I could look and see what this heading was at. So this one was our heading two. So what I could do, instead of having to go through and be like, okay, I need to bold this and then I need to make it a size 14 and then I need to 
change the font to whatever it is, I could easily come up here to my normal text and I could say, oh, it's a heading two. And it's automatically making that heading two for me. Now notice over on the left hand side, because it uh, my outline is based off of that, it automatically created that heading for me here. And then notice it threw me back into normal text so I can start typing about the summer social. Okay, so as you're creating these, if you decide, you know what, I don't really want this in my outline, okay, or there's a lot of stuff that isn't in your outline that should be in your outline, you can easily um, just delete it and then add it as you want to, okay. Um, other things that you might want to know about the outline, okay, is it did automatically, um, these headings, okay, are automatically created for you. And for, the, oops. and for this document, um, I actually went through and changed what all of the headings looked like. So I knew that this is what they wanted um, this to look like. So when I created that heading two, I actually went, um, and it didn't look like this before. It looked like, um, I can't remember exactly what it looked like, but it didn't look like this one. But what I ended up doing is saying, update heading two to match. So what ended up happening when I did that is everything after that that I said was a heading two, it created it to match. So this one and this one and where's the other ones? Um, moving down this department functions, those are all going to be my heading twos. Now notice... Sorry if I'm making you guys a little bit dizzy. Um, notice right here, so this one is technically telling me that it's a um, heading two, but I actually, because it's underlined and tabbed in a little bit, what I want it to be is I actually want it to be my heading three. Now notice heading three doesn't currently look like that, but I wanna make it look like that. So I could come here and say, update heading three to match. So now, what it's doing is it brought it in. Um, so now, what the heck? Well, what it's supposed to do, um, I don't know why it's doing that. Let me see. Okay, um, but what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to make my um, heading three here. So notice that now my heading three I have my department organization, which is my heading two, and now I have my accounting and auditing, which is a heading three. Um, you don't have to, by any means, get that in depth, because most of the time when you're looking at these, okay, your department organization is going to be, um, is probably as far down as you want to go. You probably, because if you want to, I guess you could bring it down to a subheading three, Okay, but most of the time, um, department organization is where they would want to click, and then they can decide, or then they will be able to look at that. So, um, look at and decide um, where they want to go from there. But that is taking you into that um, organization on your left-hand side. Now, when we're looking at table of contents, Okay, like I said, this one was one, something that they automatically typed in, but I'm going to um, enter that down. I just did a command return, and I think on a PC it's a control enter, um, and it just brought it down to a new page. But now, maybe I want to make my table of contents here based off of everything that we've built for our outlines, or based on the headings that we've automatically created. So instead of creating that table of contents um, by hand, what I could do is I could say insert a table of contents. I'm going to hide this really quickly. Insert a table of contents and now I can say do I want it with page numbers or do I want it with blue links? Know that when, either way if you put it with blue links um, it's going to show up blue and I can show you that really quickly but it created this table of contents for me automatically. Okay, There's some stuff that you may want to have to um, delete out or change it down here so it's not showing up. So for example, this um, 
scary. Okay, if I came here and I said that this is actually normal text, or let me just go ahead and command Z really quickly. Okay. So it's back to normal. So when I go and insert my table of contents now, and let me move it to where I want it to go. Okay, so when I insert that table of contents now, and I throw that in, okay, so now I have um, the different pieces. And if I decide that there's pieces that I, or let's say that I update something, so down here, I added after the, I wanted to do like the summer social here. Okay. And I'm going to make that a heading too. Now notice when I come back up here, I can refresh this and it will actually throw in my summer social to be right there for me. Okay. So then I can come down here and be like, oh, well, it actually added this accounting as a heading one, and I don't really want it as a heading one, so I can just change that to a normal. And then I can come back up here and update it and notice that that table or that that um, text went away right there. And I could do that same kind of stuff here as well. So it's like, oh, it, it added that for me. I didn't really want that. I could just go back and um, change that to normal text and it would bring it in just like I wanted it to. I can delete it, but then every time I go to update it, it will show up again for me. So the best thing to do is just to come down to where it's showing up incorrectly and um, change it down there. So then when I come up here and refresh, it's refreshing it how I want it to look. So, any questions with that? And you kind of have to play with this piece. Um, it's not perfect, but it does kind of help. Um, I did want to show you really quickly that if, um, let me go down and see if I can delete this really quickly. Okay. Um, actually, I'm just going to do a command Z and get out of, go back. So I'm back to my table of contents. Um, I can easily, instead of doing the blue links, I can do it with those page numbers as well. Notice that when I do it with the page numbers, if I go down and change anything down here, it will automatically update those page numbers. And if I come here to that table of contents, um, just like with that blue link, it's going to bring it up with that blue link as well. So if I needed to go and look at payroll, for example, I could just click on it, click there, and it's automatically throwing me down to that payroll section. So um, this table of contents is really nice. Know that they can do that same exact thing with the left, but I think that's more of a training thing that if that people would actually have to know that this outline exists, that that feature exists in order for them to use this. Okay, um, which isn't a big deal. You you could tell people easily, but people that um, maybe are outside the district that you want to share this with, or maybe people that just aren't super familiar, a lot of times this table of contents is just a little bit easier because it's something that more people would understand and know about. Okay, any questions with that? Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is this paint tool. So I love this paint tool. Um, so one, um, I'm going to come down to the bottom again. Okay, and and just like I was talking about before. Okay, maybe I want to do that. Um, um, the summer social here, and make it a new uh, heading. Okay, so what I could do is I could come here 
And I could, like I said, I could go through and I could change the font and I could change all of this. I could make it a heading here. But one thing I could do, if I want it to look just like this retirement one, I could come right up here and I could double click on that paint tool. And then I could come down here and just click and drag across that. Of course, I didn't click and drag across all of it. Um, but notice that when I click and drag across, it automatically is copying what was on retirement and pasting it to that summer social so it makes it look the same. Okay, and now notice um, that 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 font is exactly. So if I had, was up at the top or something, okay, and I was using a certain type of font or a certain type of color, I could make that um, the same when I moved down to another section. Um, so maybe I wanted this. Oops, I already still had my tool on. Um, so maybe I had this and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna change that to a red color. And so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to double click on, oh my gosh, I need to turn that tool off before I do this. Okay, so now I'm going to double click on that tool, and I'm like, well, now I need this one to look the same. So I can click and drag across that one, and it will change it to that same color and that same size as well. So um, that tool is a really nice tool. If you click on it one time, it will stay on for just what you're doing. If you click double click on it, then it should continue doing it for as long as you want until you turn it off. So then if I turn it off, when I start highlighting stuff again, it's it's not changing the color of it. But I love that tool, especially when you're trying to create consistency among a document. Any questions with that tool? Okay. Um, the next one down is talking about charts. So when I'm looking at, at charts on here, um, I'm going to go to my version history really quick and just go back so I don't have a lot of different stuff on it just to make it easier for you guys to see. Okay, so maybe I needed to add a chart that has to do with retirement so they can see what that chart is. If I come up here to insert chart, okay, and I just say that I want to add a bar chart in, it's just gonna throw in a random chart for me. And then from there, I can come up and click on it and come up to these little lines and I can say that I'm opening the source and it's gonna open that source inside of a Google Sheets where I'm able to then go in here and say, um, maybe I need to change it to 2021, and this one would be like 2022, and so on. And then it's like, okay, well, this retirement, and you could change um, whatever the numbers are, etc., for it. Oops, this would be 2021, and this would be 2022. And this would be like 2020. Okay. So then from there, it's like maybe I have whatever these numbers are. I'm just going to do random numbers really quickly. But they would be able to see. Oh, I think I messed it up. Um. All right, 2021, this is 2022. Anyway, so when you get your um, form how you want it to be, then what you can do is come over here to the right and click on the update button. And then it's gonna throw in that form for you however you want it. So basically you're creating your form here, it's showing up in here, and anytime you need to update it, there'll be an update button. Um, if you decide that you're like, nope, this is how I need it to stay, and then you're working on it like in other, um, for the next year or something like that, you can always click on this unlink button. And when you unlink it, now I'm not able to change it. It's more like an image inside of here. 
but it would be there that I'd be able to use it um, and move it around, etc. Um, okay. But if I want to make any changes to it, I have to do that inside of Google Docs. So I would or Google Sheets. So then I would just come and open that source. And it would pull it up in that new document. Um, notice that when you are doing Google sh um, a chart as well, when you come to the chart right here, um, there is an option that you're pulling it from Sheets. And basically what that means is I already have a document or a Google Sheets that has a table on it that I wanted to bring in. And this will allow me to go to the Google Sheets that's already existing and bring it in from here or into here which is kind of a nice feature. Any questions on that one? Okay. Um, the next one is find and replace. This one I use like 50,000 times a day. And basically, um, maybe I am trying to look to see um, if I am had a certain person in it. Or maybe, um, you know, I'm looking and somebody is re retiring, okay? Or somebody is quitting to move to a different job. So I'm just gonna take um, Shauna for a second. And maybe, okay, I'm up here and I know that Shauna is leaving and I need to um, replace her with whoever the new person is. I could do a Command F, okay? Or it's a Control F on the keyboard. Do a Command F and I could look for Shauna. So now it's saying that she is in there three times. So I can come here and be like, oh, Shauna, I need to replace her name with the new person. Great. And I can type her name in. And then I could go down to the next one. Oh, there she is again. Okay. And anytime I do that, I could um, replace it that way. Okay. Um, or an even easier way to do that is I can say I could do my command F. And I could say, oh, there she is. And I could come here to my more options. And every time I see Shauna Low, I actually want to replace it with Sandra Martz. So now when I go and I can say, I can either um, find next or previous. Or if I'm like, I just know that every time that this com person comes up, I want to replace it with this one. I could just quickly do a replace all. And there it is. Now notice that because this is a first dot last instead of her first name space last name, that it didn't change it there. Um, so then again, I could search for just her name and be like, okay, I actually need to go in and change this one by myself. And then I could go in and be like, chandra.marts at canyonsdistrict.org. Okay, I do this one a lot. Um, for example, if I, um, and noticing that I am using the same word a hundred times and I need to, to change that up so it doesn't sound as repetitive, I could go in here and do a Command F or that Control F and find it. And every time that I see, um, let's see, what's a word that, I'll just use the word and. Then it's like, I use the word and 56 times. Is there any other word that I could use that could replace and? And notice that I don't want to do a replace all here or a find and replace like I did before because I have words like Sandy that has the word and in it. But so you'd want to go um, word by word on this one. But that's an easy way to find and start replacing some of those words that you're using repetitively with your um, higher vocabulary type words. Any questions with find and replace? Okay, moving on, we're almost done. Um, Google add-ons, Google add-ons is another great tool um, that you can use. And a lot of them are not necessarily open to our district right now, but if you're like, hey, this is a really cool tool, do you think that we could get it open? And um, we can talk to our IT department and see what we can do about getting it to something that you wanna use. So right here under add-ons, there and you can click on get add-ons. There are hundreds of maybe thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of different tools that you can use with inside of Google Docs. 
So some of them are um, tools that you have used or that people use often, others are not. Some of them, notice that you've got like the ratings right here. So some of them are better rated than others, so you'd wanna be careful with that as well. And some of them are paid tools versus um, free tools. So this one right here is one that I was like, oh, that would actually would be a really cool one to show um, because maybe we have some people who want act, um, to be able to type in accents a little bit easier, okay? Um, but notice that when I went here, it says that it, the app is not allowed for install by admin. So if you have read through it and you're like, yes, I really think that this is a good idea that I think we should have, um, you could talk to um, anyone like an ISD or an ed tech like me, and we could see what we could do about getting it turned on um, for our district office at least, okay? Um, but one that um, is working right now that is kind of nice is um, this Lucid chart diagrams. And so the way it works is once you've added it, so when you get to get add-ons and you go, oops, I just exited out. When you get your get add-ons and you decide that there's one that you like that you wanna use, okay, then you could um, click on it and then there will be an add button right here. Okay, so talk. Um, if you already have them installed, like some of them, when you log into your CSD docs, the district has already installed them for you. Um, but if you already have one, it will say installed. So I have like this Lucid chart right here. So once you get that, then you can see which ones you have added here. And you could say, oh, Lucid chart, this is the one I wanted to work on. So now I could say that I want to insert my Lucid chart diagram. And notice it will say it's working. Any add-ons, and this works for sheets, this works for docs, this works for forms, and this should work for um, slides as well. But any that you show up, that show up, will show up over on your right-hand side, and then you'd be able to work off of them on your right-hand side. So now, for example, I have these diagrams, and it's like, um, if I already have one that I like, um, that I've been using that I've already set up, I can go ahead and just click on the add button and it will throw that, um, that diagram into my document for me. So I don't know where I just put it. Cause let me come down here. So I can say that I wanna add that in. And then here it is. It gives a date that I added it. It gives the form. Etc. If I want to keep it linked, I can, or I can. So when I update it here, I can do that update here. If I decide I don't want that, I can always delete it. If I need to add a new diagram, I can always come down to this plus sign here, and then I can um, decide what kind of diagram I want to add, and I can create it from inside of this, and then put it into here. Okay, all of them are gonna kind of work a little bit differently. Um, so the di lucid chart diagrams obviously is making a diagram, but some of them um, may be for like a, a speech to text reader, or you may have some that help you highlight in different colors or do different things. Or um, I noticed that there was one that is like Avery. And so that one is helping you make um, la your labels for you. So there's lots of different ones that you can kind of look at. And, but just remember, um, like I said, some of them are paid. Some of them are a little bit um, tricky to use and some of them have really horrible ratings. So just be careful because most of these are created by outside sources. And so they're not 100% sure that they're always gonna work for what you're trying to do. But know that they're there. And if you find some that you're very interested in using, we can see what we can do about getting them unlocked for you. Uh, any questions about your add-ons? Okay, that is technically everything that I have for our Google Docs today. I don't know why that says sheet still. Um, our Google Docs today, does anyone have any questions about our um, Google Docs that I can answer for you? Hey, 
well, hearing no questions, I am going to end the recording. I will stay on for just a second in case you do have any questions, but I really want to thank you guys for joining me today, and hopefully I will see you not next week, but the week after. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, Julia. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Chandra. Yep, thanks, Shonda. Thanks for joining.